what exists in reality and what does not. Despite the fact that you might think you might know the solution, the James Webb Space Telescope has entered the discussion, and its results are startling. As previously believed, there is an equality, which is known scientifically to be a symmetry in the universe. For every matter is antimatter. However, the recent discovery and speculations by the James Webb Space Telescope have proved something else, turning things upside down. So what has JWST discovered about the symmetry of the universe? How does this contradict the existing theories? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. Intro to Symmetry in the Universe As we'll be talking about this really recent and exciting paper published that may have found something incredibly strange about the universe, unexpectedly the cosmos, or at least the early cosmos, may not have been perfectly symmetrical. In other words, it may have shown some preference for what we typically refer to as handedness, or I suppose symmetry. Or to offer our best guess at a little more plausible explanation, if we were to produce a lot of things in the universe, we would anticipate that an equivalent amount of their opposites or mirror images would also exist. Despite the fact that in this instance, the mirror image might apply to any property. Here's an example of a mirror image of a charge that would be expected, since we typically anticipate that the universe will contain both in equal quantities in order for it to essentially make sense. However, there are other sorts of symmetry in particle physics such as parity which is somewhat related to handedness or the direction in which a typical particle would spin. Overall, physicists believe that all particles will be symmetric in every sense for a very long time. But there's also a concept in physics called CP violation which describes particular unusual symmetry violations in particular kinds of particles. We've actually talked about this in one of the previous videos, but there was a discovery made in the 1960s that eventually won the Nobel Prize. While the details of the discovery are somewhat debatable, the main finding is that CP violation or the violation of symmetry appears to exist in some subatomic particles throughout the universe. But you can also read the article about the infamous WU experiment if you just want to read about it. This is a fairly interesting tale that basically demonstrates that there is something happening in the universe after all. However, in this instance, it was on a very small scale, as it revealed that while some particles appear to violate symmetry, the vast majority of them do not. The majority of the objects appear to be symmetrical, which by itself creates a little issue. The issue is how to explain how everything came to be, or more specifically, why we are even here. If the majority of matter in the universe is symmetric and all particles are equal to the mirror images and produced in the same manner at the beginning of the universe, then the Big Bang should have produced an equal amount of matter and antimatter. Is this all real? However, all of these are merely speculations and hints at this point. There is no concrete proof. Do any of these theories have any supporting evidence? Or are they just as speculative as dark matter? This paper appears to be pointing to some extremely peculiar evidence that, as of now, has no known explanation. Let's speak of this in more depth now, and we'll also talk about how it was discovered and any potential consequences. First of all, the title of this article is obviously a bit lengthy, but I'm not sure what the scientists performed was very engaging and fascinating. They simply found that the simplest straightforward three-dimensional structure, whose mirror images are likely to be different, is a tetrahedron when it comes to mirror images or satire. Or, alternatively, a tetrahedron is the most basic geometry that cannot be rotated into its three-dimensional mirror image. The simplest 3D shape with distinct mirror images. So the scientists who wrote this paper wondered if, hypothetically, we could find a lot of these tetrahedrons in the universe and determine whether the overall number will be roughly equal between left-sided or left-handed and right-handed, or if there will be some kind of preference. Will there be more tetrahedrons overall? Let's say that there are other tetrahedrons. Let's call them left-handed and right-handed for the purpose of simplicity. Modern theories and our understanding of the cosmos clearly indicate that there ought to be equality. No matter where we look, we ought to observe an equal distribution of each. And it's independent of what we look at. So how can we even look for these tetrahedra out there? Clearly, we won't be able to identify particular stars of the shape or shapes that are peculiar to it. They realized that you can really relate this to other galaxies, specifically distances to galaxies in comparison to one another, which was a pretty clever thing to do. 
The tetrahedron in this instance is made up of four distinct galaxies, with the distances between them denoted as R1, R2, and R3. They looked at quadruplets of various galaxies out there, and as you can see from the formula, R1 is the smallest distance and R3 is the largest. They simply needed to know how far apart these galaxies were from one another based on various redshift calculations. But they concentrated on galaxies known as LRG bright red galaxies in order to make computations and observations considerably simpler. Specifically, 280,000 of these galaxies were found in the barium oscillation spectroscopic scan, and 800,000 more were found in a slightly different study carried out by the same program. They essentially built these fictitious four-point correlation functions out of all of these really brilliant galaxies after looking at over a million galaxies whose characteristics were well known. Since each galaxy formed a three-dimensional vector, this literally generated millions of trillions of possible possibilities. Once more, theoretically, we should anticipate roughly equal numbers of these left and right-handed tetrahedrons in all galaxies, regardless of their type or location, based just on the supposition that stuff is distributed randomly throughout the universe. Even while certain chunks might be a little bit more concentrated than others, once you average everything out, everything should be roughly equal. However, it is evident that the underlying cause of this symmetry is unknown and is currently impossible to identify. In addition, it's crucial to discuss potential mistakes in light of this rare summertime discovery. While there may be some bias in terms of errors in this, it is only based on the SDSS release so far and the 1 million galaxies that are known to exist. We've already talked about this before, but the SDSS release thus far just covers this portion of the cosmos. In essence, it doesn't encompass all of the cosmos that surrounds us primarily due to the manner that these telescopes operate, where they often look at night, and how some places become fairly inaccessible. In theory, the fact that things are slightly more sighted in these places might abruptly disappear if we looked here or over there, for example. However, for the time being, this is the only bias that we can identify, and the only issue with this particular interpretation. The Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, or the ISIS Euclid Telescope, which will be launched sometime in 2023, is very likely to provide even more data to either prove this or find even more weirdness or completely disprove this and find where the mistakes actually was. However, there is a solution to all of this in the future. Therefore, it will take some time before it can be determined whether this was just bias that these telescopes can correct for or if anything fundamental has been revealed. But until then, this is a significant discovery that is a little unique and doesn't currently have a very good explanation. The implication is that if the cosmos was created in the first few seconds of its existence, it is still observable today. And more crucially, it may finally explain why we are even here. Why did matter defeat antimatter? And what caused the creation of tangible objects during the past 13.8 billion years? Chirality. However, there is still the issue of the universe, the theory of Nielsen Nino Mia. This is a no go theorem, an impossibility where the condition involves hands and can happen in reality, but not in simulations. Think about waving to yourself while looking in the mirror. Your reflection will raise its opposition arm in imitation of you. Chirality, which derives from the Greek word for hand, is demonstrated in this instance. An object that can be separated from its mirror image is said to be chiral. Pig molecules, like those found in fruit, have the feature that a left hand cannot be superimposed on a right hand. The limonene molecules in mint and caraway are their inverted counterparts. Despite the fact that the orange and lemon peels appear to be very different from one another in terms of color, flavor, and scent, both the molecule of carbon and the drug thalidomide, which is dangerous in its mirror form and has caused thousands of children to be born with significant birth defects, are reflections of one another. In December 1956, Qian Xiongwu made the discovery of chirality while observing atoms vaporize. These were radioactive cobalt-60 atoms, which when they decay into nickel-60, emit an electron. The electrons should have degenerated in a random direction based on their spin, whether in the real world or in the mirror world at this point. They exhibited a longing for the deteriorated direction instead. Imagine holding up a newspaper while gazing in the mirror, only to find that the words are totally legible, as if being from another universe is reflecting you. This was discovered at the subatomic level by Wu, and the conflict between chirality and discreditization arises when the laws of physics are computer simulated. Where comes JWST? By examining the cosmic microwave background CMB, 
the oldest light in the universe that was produced some 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The JWST has been studying the origin of the universe. The geometry, pace of expansion, meta-content, and primordial fluctuations of the cosmos, as well as its history, are all revealed in the CMB. With unmatched precision and sensitivity, JWST has been monitoring the CMB spectrum and using its mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, to search for any departures from the standard cosmological model. The first light sources that emerged during the cosmic dark ages, which lasted hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang, have also been the focus of JWST's research into the Big Bang. The initial galaxies were small and feeble, housing supermassive black holes, whereas the first stars were large and short-lived, releasing heavy elements into ultraviolet light. These sources have been found and characterized as well as their distances and redshifts using JWST's near-infrared camera, near-cam, and near-infrared spectrograph, near-spec. By observing the period of reionization which occurred when the first light sources ionized the great majority of hydrogen atoms in the intergalactic medium, ending the cosmic dark ages, the JWST has also been studying the Big Bang. The CMB was affected by the reionization epoch, which also had an impact on the formation and development of galaxies. With its MIRI slitless spectrograph, the near-infrared imager sensors, the JWST has been examining the history of reionization and its effect on cosmic structures. The cosmic dawn which happened when the first stars and galaxies produced enough molten hydrogen to cool and compress into more intricate structures has also been observed by JWST. The cosmic dawn marked the transition from a simple to a complex cosmos and had an impact on subsequent star formation history. Using its near-cam, near-spec, closest and MIRI detectors, JWST has been looking for molecular hydrogen emission from these structures and analyzing their physical characteristics. But we don't yet know what other effects this all may have. If true, it's actually a pretty significant discovery, so we will surely continue to look into it whenever we have more information, more data, more explanations, or when we learn anything else extremely interesting about why galaxies appear to create this unique handedness. What is your take on this? Do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one. See you at the next one.